um, you're not in our final space. Our final space will not look like this. There will be offices. It's going to be a, a kitchenette where Ture is, which is fitting for Dr. Ture. Don't you think he's in this process? <laughs> 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 Um, this wall will not be here. Our suite will extend to where uh, the San Copa Bird is, and uh, there'll be a reception area. We've been involved with our history department here at Georgia Southern to collect all histories of our Gullah Geechee elders. And so there will be iPads there where people can see and hear their stories, edits of their stories. We're also going to have art collections from various um, metal artists as well as paint artists throughout um, the low country, so to speak. We hope to have a very small library out there. So um, the finished product will be happening at some point in the very near future, we hope. We do have the drawings beyond there taking bids now, so I'm hopeful that before the end of the year we'll have a bona fide center and what a grand opening we're going to have, right? The, South opening camp was held in December of last year, and we're expecting bigger things for our grand opening. Now, I'll let you in on a secret. Teray almost let it out. Dr. Teray almost let it out. He said that there was a connection between Sierra Leone and Gullah Geechee. We have found out that that connection is extremely strong, both in terms of language and in terms of culture. Well, since we are about advocating for the Gullah Geechee culture, we want to give our students and the surrounding community an opportunity to go home. And we're calling this the Savannah, Sierra Leone, Sankofa Journey. Right? And so we are in the month of March, March 10th through the 19th, taking a voyage over to Sierra Leone. Community members will be free this time to join us. Um, and we're setting, we're in the process of firming up the price and what the price points will be in terms of down payment, so on and so forth. That should be out this week, actually. Uh, for students, we're trying to get it so that all students will only have to pay $1,000 if that. And the rest of the trip will be paid for. That is our goal. We're working really hard. We're working with a man named Amadou Masali who is from Sierra Leone and now lives in the States, who's put together a fantastic um, itinerary for us to follow while we're over there. And so we're excited to go home. Um, as a matter of fact, some members of the community, when they found out about the trip, even began thinking about going home and it brought tears to their eyes because this is symbolic, this is um, awesome. This is the first time a university in Georgia has attempted to do something like this. So we're excited and we hope that all of you will want to be at, um, a part of this unique and groundbreaking kind of journey. Each month we have some type of a program that is educational in nature and it's brought to you um, to the, the audience by way of either the Africana Study Center or the Gullah Geechee Center. The reason that's important is they come from two different pots of money. So it depends on who's paying for it, depends on you know which group is sponsoring that. Um, but look for our newsletter. We have our student um, worker here. She doesn't like to be called a student worker, our administrative assistant. Destiny <laughs> Craig. And um, hopefully you got like signing sheets or some no, 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 no. Okay, but well, we wanna we wanna be able to spread the news. We don't, we don't want to do that. Um, the other thing that you will have are evaluations, correct? No, no, yes, because we want your feedback <laughs> on what, you know, what kind of programs you want to see in the future. Another thing that we have is what I used to call community conversations. Dr. Ture told me that a Gullah teacher word for that is crack tea. Crack tea is an opportunity for the Gullah community to come in and talk about issues that, that concern them. And um, as is fitting, we may have a university professor to come in and talk about possible solutions to whatever those problems and challenges are. And some of you have already been to our Juneteenth. We first had that in 2021. That was the first time Juneteenth has ever been uh, recognized on this campus. So that was the first. Kwanzaa, we observed Kwanzaa last year. This year, our Kwanzaa trip is exciting because 
Amadi Masale is going to join in with us, the young man who's coordinating the Gullah Geechee tour to uh, Sierra Leone, will be a part of that. So uh, we want to stay connected to you. We want you to know what we're doing because we want you to be a part of history. And by being here today, you are a part of our history. So thank you very much and let's get the conversation going. <laughs> Say thank you, Dr. Bryant. Dr. Bryant, of course, you know we got the evaluation and also the signing sheet. You know, because we didn't know if we didn't have that, she was gonna say something about it. That's why we made sure bam, evaluation right over there and signing sheet. And if you didn't sign in like a young brown, you can go do that later. So get your evaluation. So again, and as we said, this is a conversation. This is a relaxed atmosphere, it's us. And that's what we want people to understand, that this center is for us to be able to have conversations that are desperately needed in an environment like this. And that we look at the academic environment, having a conversation, but then also for the community, not to be able to engage in conversation to not bring about change. And so we're happy, that's what, again, Dr. Bryan said, this is our second year with regards to having a program focusing on African-American and Hispanic-American unity. See, oftentimes people have us, I say, they compartmentalize us. And when we compartmentalize, they can come against each one of us and hit each one of us. And let y'all notice um, that this is also part of our show, Run Tell Back. It's going to be aired on Run Tell Back. And we had Mesa, which is the migrant workers of Southeast, uh, migrant equity of Southeast Georgia. We had them on two weeks ago. And so people began to hear some things about what are the experience of Latin, Latin Americans, Hispanic Americans right here. And they also then shared, they said, we look out for any immigrants. It doesn't matter if they're Hispanic or if they're Asian or if they are African. We look out for everyone. And so people began to hear some of the stories that impact them. And then some people say, it impacts us also. It impacts us in McIntosh County. Let me say McIntosh, I'll say, okay, yes, indeed. And Glen County, these experiences are what people need to know. And I tell people what this is about is about respecting one's humanity and then being able to share that same sentiment regarding humanity. We have two great people here, and they're connected. One of them connected to Georgia Southern University, and she works here guiding people, helping people. She's an asset to the Georgia Southern family, and that is Tatiana Cabral-Smith. A round of applause for her. <laughs> yes, uh -huh, people know you, yes. <laughs> and we also have someone who is in the community who's making an impact on the community, not trying to empower the people. Again, his voice is a mighty voice, and we're glad to have him here tonight. That is Julius Hall of Our Black Media. All things are Julius, and we're going to ask them to come forward and let them share a bit of who they are, and then we're going to flow into the program. With Intro, yeah, plan, yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so 
Like you said, I am part of Georgia Southern University staff. I work in the counseling center. Um, so I'm a therapist here. I'm so, so, so happy to do that work. I wore the shirt today by my friend Andre Henry that says less arguing, more organizing. And I was like, you know what? I think that's good for today, <laughs> for this meeting. I feel like we need to be together, we need to organize, and yeah, who else is gonna do it, right? <laughs> so um, I have a background in counseling, I have a master's in counseling, I'm a licensed professional counselor, I'm passionate about mental health, especially for people of color, black and brown folks, uh, kids of immigrants, people who maybe don't always have access to those resources, unfortunately, created, it's created that way, the system, right? So. Um, I'm really passionate about social justice. I'm on the board. I'm the chairwoman for Migrant Equity Southeast Mesa, and I love those folks doing the good work there, working with immigrants, all immigrants, and people who need help. Uh, what else? Yeah, I do lots of stuff. I also make jewelry. I love jewelry. I always admire yours. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I love people, community, it's really important to me. I've tried to create that as much as we can here at Georgia Southern. I know with COVID it's been kind of hard, but trying to do as much as we can. This year we started Cafecito Con Counseling. I know that Justin's attended that, where it's like just coffee time with counseling with OMA. It's every Thursday at three. And so it's been really fun getting to know each other, drinking coffee, it's all black and brown folks. <laughs> We're just sharing, like, Oh, what's your experience like growing up hearing about mental health and what's this and that? So that's kind of me right now. I've been here for three years in October and I'm proud to be here representing Nese and myself and the Counseling Center. Thank y'all for having me. Oh, I'm a daughter of immigrants. My family's Dominican, Puerto Rican. So I'm mixed race, um, you know, diaspora, West African, Spanish, all the things, Taino people from the DR. Um, so yeah, Ispanola, that's me. Spanish speaking from the Bronx, then moved to the South, and here I am. <laughs> All that. Yeah. I'm Nick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which part is this? Am I supposed to give this speech? Yeah, no, no, I'm to speak you. Oh, okay. I like no, you. Let people know who you are. See, Dr. Tiny Hall, our school board representative wants to put him in place. Yeah, to the body. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, well, that you're here. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Julius Hall, and um, I helped create this gentleman over right here, Dr. Torre. I found him um, years ago. And, no one has ever put it like that before. <laughs> I, it's, it's a specimen there. I, 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 I created that. Uh, but I'm proud of it. I did a great job tonight. Um, but Humble, too. <laughs> I, um, I'm a political consultant here in Savannah, Chatham County. I go everywhere. They call me all the way to Georgetown, South Carolina, so I go everywhere to do the work, uh, help get people elected. If you want to get elected in this city, call me. You'll soon see in the next elections coming up that I tell the truth uh, if it's going to happen. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things I do. That's one of the hats I wear. I am a political consultant first. And then uh, I am a business person. Uh, I have several things going on. I'm a paid mouthpiece. Uh, <laughs> Some people say I talk too much. I, I don't think I talk enough. <clears throat> My wife said I curse too much. Um, but sometimes you have to put that kind of pressure on people. Um, but I have a platform called Our Black Media. I should have brought cards in. I know what I was thinking about. Um, and um, we have about 26, 28 shows, something like that, on everything from health to finances, to sports, to news, to politics. We do it all. Real estate show just start. I got a cooking show starting in a couple of days. Uh, so we do it all. It's a black uh, platform called Our Black Media. You can find it on Facebook at All Things Relevant Media. That's my first company that I do. Uh, it's called ATR, it's All Things Relevant. Um, and we, um, you can also find us on every streaming platform there is. 
we all we just started on Roku TV. So mm -hmm. if you're home and you're on Roku, and you want to see all black media, add us to your channel on your Roku, Roku TV, and you can watch all our shows on Roku TV. We're there. Um, we are also um, on YouTube. Uh, our, we 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 have about thirty eight thousand people watch us a month. Uh, which is low, we need to be about 300,000, but we haven't had the time to invest in it because I had some people like Yana and Miss Javana who don't show up to work. And um, they sit right out there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, it's good, it's ready and Yana. And um, they don't show up to work. So uh, we should be at about 300,000. Chris is doing all the work itself because they haven't showed up. But, uh, but um, with that media platform, we, uh, we, uh, we try to broadcast things for the, the African-American community. And um, I'm glad that we have an opportunity to have this discussion because, you know, what I'm going to say, you know, it's not much. It's just, it might be controversial, but it's not much. But it, it should have been happening. And we should be the ones who are doing it to show the rest of the world, or the rest of the country at least, what needs to be done because power is in numbers. And we have enough numbers to change things and we're not, we're not doing that. But get, to get back, that's part of the speech. But anyway, to get back to um, um, me, um, I'm in the process of, uh, I just finished one book I haven't released yet. I just finished a book of poetry that, I, I, that I've been writing since high school. I'm only 38, I just might, you know, I, I might look a little older, but I'm only 38. My wife might be on your hands. Um, <laughs> they can't hear you in the back. So you talk in the phone, <clears throat> they cannot hear you in the back. Because oh, you can't back. hear me in the no, back? they can't hear you in the back. <laughs> no. Okay, well, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, but with the um, um, streaming platform is what I was talking about earlier. Um, we try to cater all our shows to give information to our community because we know that our community does not get the correct information, especially the African American and the brown neighborhood uh, the communities. The Hispanic, you've never seen a case from the Hispanic it's, community. Yeah. Uh, the only thing you see about our community is something negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, we won't kick you out of this class. <laughs> we, won't, we, won't, we, won't get, we won't let you get into that right like now. But you, we say, but you do an introduction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm sorry. I just get, I get carried away. I'm surprised my wife ain't stopped me. And so, yeah. Okay. Okay. My bad. My bad. She's excited. Yeah, yeah. I, can tell. yeah I, I, I tell you, I gotta read this tonight because you know I like to. Because when I stop oh. talking, I don't stop. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, oh, look at him! Oh, look at him too. This is why I share with you all that the format is totally different. With regards to our panels, our conversation, yeah. because we just they are we, it's honest conversation, yeah. it's real. Yeah. I learned that in Statesboro when Dr. Bryant told me, like, hey, I got a question. I need to ask the panelists right now. So I learned yeah. like, yeah. and so you heard how the people in the audience that made their comments, so everybody's all geared up, they are hyped up. Like ready, ready. So right, we do that. So we thank you all. And so we'll just give some historical overview with regard to this. And so um I will throw this question out to y'all. I want y'all to ponder this. Who are the people that get sick of self? Black and brown. I, I, I need mean you to answer. <laughs> oh, okay, but that's fine. Right. And people tend to think, they think African American solely. But there are some other people, and actually, and when we talk about information not being put out there, that they initially, at one point, they were going to say that African Americans and Hispanic Americans will experience sickle cell. But now they start shying away from saying that. And there's some people not understand. They're like, how do Hispanics get sickle cell? Because when you say Hispanic or Latino, it is Africans, natives, and Euros. 
So we, well, we tend to think that it's just, oh, no, and so that comes to play. So that automatically tells you that that's a person, that Hispanic person is a person who origins are tied to Africa. We tend to forget about that. We tend to forget about that the first freedom fighter in the Americas, y'all know the first freedom fighter in America is, and this is just rhetorical, I don't think you're necessarily responsible. Some of y'all may know it. His name is Atui. Atui is on an island that they go on call, they go on call it Hispaniola. Hey, that's right. Okay, okay, oh my God. All right. Everybody's showing off right now. They're showing off. That's good, but be like that. That's right. Hispaniola. Uh, IAT. Also called the Dominican Republic, but original names are also called Bahia. And so I say to y'all, Chimo, Chimo, Minamo, Arawak, Minamo, Taino, Miamo, Ifeka. So when we talk about this, we talk about this experience. And who is Atui? Atui will leave from what we know as IT or Hispanic or from the Dominican Republic. And he, Huh? He's scared. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Woo! 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 This is, this is like, ooh, everybody got to show up a little Jamal. <laughs> everybody. And so then what happened? They are fighting the Spanish, and I started talking about another queen, Anaconda, and also Canonba, King Canonba. These are people who are fighting the Spanish, and then I tweet, I tell them, he's one of my heroes. He then goes to Cuba, and he's not telling them in Cuba. He said to them, he said, listen, the Spanish are coming here, and they are basically taking our daughters. They are fighting us with these shields, but they will not fight us one-on-one. -on -one. He then goes and says that they are the people who are not taking our lands. And he said that we must come together to fight them. And eventually what happened, that I tweet, is captured by the Spanish. And I tell folks, some of my classes, people heard me talk about this, that when they now have him, and they, the Spanish are going to execute him, they have him right there at the Tamarind tree, they have him tied up, and you see images of him there in Cuba where they have to stick the killing wood at the bottom of his feet. And what then happens, the Spanish priest goes up to him and say, do you want the last rites to go to heaven? And that tweet says, are there any Spanish in heaven? <laughs> And so what happened? The priest does the same thing. The priest, the priest keeps kind of laughing. Oh, uh, I think so. And that tweet <laughs> says, do not give it to me. I don't want to go where they are. Powerful statement that he now is the first freedom fighter in the Americas. And then when we go and look at the saw right here that we know is IAT, we understand these connections that some of us, when we hear about praise houses here in what we know is the Gullah Geechee area on Sapphire, on Hilton Head, in Savannah, in Bluffton, in Jacksonville, in St. Augustine, we hear the praise houses not understanding that that is the cabildos that's in Puerto Rico and in Cuba. They also call them societies. Even if we won't go to Brazil, we know Brazil is Portuguese, but they call them societies. So understanding that they not come from Africa, not each one of them being diffused. And there is a poet who is from Cuba named Juan Masano. He called our people, he said, we are the stolen people. African Latino, African Hispanic, but many don't know the story. And then we go and look at a place, Cuba. One of the founding fathers of Cuba, Antonio Meso. Maceo, excuse me, that he is called the Bronze Titan, that he is second in command of the Cuban Independence Army, and that he too, his family will sacrifice their fear of death. His mother will sacrifice her brown sons, her black sons, for Cuba to become independent. And then guess what? When we talk about this experience of Latin America, uh, Hispanic Americans, you got to come to a place called La Florida. You got to come to a place called Cephalo Sound, Cephalo Sound in Georgia. Then you got to go to Santa Alina, now known as Hilton Head. And they are with an expedition called Lucas Vasquez de Alion. And Alion has Africans with him, and those Africans have now set foot on Hilton Head, 1526. Now tell our folks, when you talk about the experience of 1619, you're coming from a British standpoint, not from a Spanish standpoint. We're here 1526, not 1619, so we've been here before. And at some point, those Africans will now fight with Native Americans coming to Ghana and fight for freedom. So they're here. Again, and then some of y'all know about Esteban Nico and Esteban, <laughs> the African explorer who explored the southern part of the United States, going even over to Mexico. 
Some of y'all know about Juan Gallardo, the African man. Oh, yeah, y'all hear these names. Y'all think, oh, oh, they, they, Hispanic, they Latin, like, yeah, but with African origins. And so the first wheat that is grown in North America is grown by a man by the name of Juan Gallardo, the same man who I just mentioned, who is a conquistador. So the conquistadors are also with the Spanish African. That's who says they're, they're African also. But see, we're not knowing, realizing this right here. So when you hear Hispanic, you think another people that's not connected to us. No, for me, when I, when I hear Hispanic, I'm always trying to find out that connection because I want, I want people to understand that. And then when we talk about Puerto Rican independence, the man who is right in the same place that Marcus Garvey is located, the author Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Pedro Aviso Campos, is put right up there in Atlanta also, so those of you from Georgia, in the federal pen up there. And he's one of the fathers of Puerto Rican, and the fighting for Puerto Rican independence. No, those are our stories. And then even when we look at now with regards to the civil rights movement, that there's a component that comes out of what we know as California with regards to people now trying to fight with cases also about discrimination. Powerful story when we understand that there's some of y'all that have some, so much pride with regards to your history, your knowledge, and you throw out there about the, the state that is named after an African queen. Califia, California. <laughs> So with regard to that, so we look at that, we see that experience right there. And then some of you heard me ask the question, who is the first black president in the United States? People are going to say, John Hansen. Like, no. They said, Barack Obama. No. They said, they got arrow. <coughs> who is the they got arrow? And I tell people, I say, see, when you compartmentalize, you think United States, you think United States of America. But there's another place called United States of Mexico. The proper name of Mexico, and Vicente Guerrero is the second president of Mexico. He is of native descent and African descent. See, that's been our story. And for Gullah Geechee people, black folks here, who people, we go to Sierra Leone, yes, but some of us can't just go to Sierra Leone. We go down to Florida, then to Oklahoma, then we go to Southern Tejas, Southern Texas, then we go to a place called Nacimiento de los Negros a black city in northern Mexico who people came from a place originally out of Georgia and South Carolina. And so some people say that when we do this right here on Sapelo, we do it in Camden County, in Glenn County, Liberty County, Bryan County, Chatham County, and Beaufort County, and Jasper County, South Carolina, those of you from South Carolina, when they connecting to their Africanity. They're connected to this other part. And so they're like the elders are dying on. And then when you do the ring shout, see if I said the ring shout, he gonna show off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't move, but keep your butt right now. No, that's right. That's right. So we all family in here right now. And when you go around counterclockwise, somebody else call it the ring shout, somebody else call it Bamba. Bought the eco. All going right back to Africa. So we give you all a little taste of our connection, our ties, that you let somebody else compartmentalize us and have us separated, not understanding. So I would say this to you, Mr. Julius Hall, when you said, well, I'm finally glad to see something like this happen. You know why it's happening? Because it's done at the Gullah Geechee Center at Georgia Southern University, and you raised me well. <laughs> so the question is, the first question is, what is the experience of African, of, these, of Hispanic Americans in the United States? What's the yeah, game, just in general? What is the experience of Hispanic Americans in the U.S.? Yeah, and I come all up front from a place of privilege. I was born here in the U.S., you know, so I have my papers, as they would say. <laughs> I'm American, you know? So I come from that place. But knowing and hearing the struggles of my parents and my own struggles with racism and people just calling us terrible, terrible names, telling us to go back to where we came from 
and this and that. And my mom would say, I know where I came from. If I told you, it was a white person. If I told you're white, but to go, where would you go? You don't know where your family's from? She's like, I know I go, I'll go to Africa. I go to the Caribbean. I go here to Spain, but like, you know, so that's my experience. My mom being very open about racism and us being treated differently and what to expect that life won't be fair, you know, maybe because she's like, you're tan, you know, you're morenita, which is what they call, I'm not, she's like, you're not negra, you're not black, you're morenita, you're not white, like your grandma, my grandma looks like, like they would ask my mom if she was her caretaker, that's their experience, when they'd be out, they still, still ask that. My grandfather, Puerto Rican, looked like Muhammad Ali, I legit thought Muhammad Ali was my grandpa on TV, I was like, they're not little <laughs> boxing, you know, so, my mom is half and half mixed, and my dad, my grandma's very Taina looking, very much like the native folks in the Dominican Republic, wide nose, you know, very curvy, gorgeous, curly hair, saying that she was ugly, because that's what she was told. You know, she grew up in the time of uh, dictatorship in the Dominican Republic, trying to cleanse the, cleanse the blood and not let us mix. You know, so that's their background. And my grandpa looked, my dad's dad, white, like a good old boy, green eyes, pale. You know, so all these different things. And I blatantly would see the difference, the colorism, the difference between how my abuela on my dad's side is treated, how my abuela on my mom's side is treated based on how they look and where we are. Um, in New York, a lot more people looked like us growing up, you know, came to the South, and would hear way more like racist things like go pick oranges and this and that and i'm like do you even know where i'm from like they're like you're mexican i'm like there's more than one spanish-speaking place you know like so that kind of thing and so having to battle that and the complicated relationship with that and then making a lot of friends from other spanish-speaking places and people with similar experience and then really connecting to you know black and brown folks and and knowing and sharing that we have a lot of similar experiences a lot of those hard experiences but um yeah so all kinds of stuff i guess that's some of it that's yes, my experience right, right. we're not a monolith of course right, right. so like we're not all going to have the same experience but that's my personal experience married to a white boy from the south <laughs> last name smith you know i was like oh no i'm keeping my cover no. <laughs> i'll add yours at the end but you know and so um yeah, experiencing that, you know, learning about what he learned in Atlanta, he's from Decatur, so learning about his Southern experience and good things and hard things, you know, um, and teaching each other along the way, learning a lot, um, and here I am, so yeah. Nice. And to this all, what is the experience of African people, African Americans in the United States? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> all, you know, the same devil. Say Thank you. 
third date. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the African American experience has been, uh, uh, we've had our ups and downs. You see, we just got the first black ever Supreme Court justice, which is just female. backwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, female Supreme Court justice, which is backwards. Uh, this country only gives us a little bit because we don't demand a lot. We need to demand a lot. Us coming together makes us powerful. We just don't know it yet. You know, I tell people all the time, the only thing people fear is large bank accounts and large numbers of people. They don't fear anything else. You have to make people fear you. They don't give you anything. And in this country, we have never been given anything except something to control us except something to keep us enslaved. So the African American experience in this country is one that is not shown anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, the way that we've been treated and um, you would think that they would give us uh, reparations. You would think that they would pay for our uh, college. You, you, you know, uh, higher education. You, you would think that we would be getting a lot. We built this country, you know, and um, we just been left out because we have not demanded everything that we uh, supposed to get. You say the good right a while back, burn it down. The only time they're going to respect us in, is when we burn it down. Mm -hmm. If we don't burn it down, they feel like we are good with what it is right now. You have to burn it down. Whatever it is, whether it's the status quo, whether it's a building, whether it's uh, uh, something, something that they've established, you need to burn it down and start fresh. If you don't, then you can start from a level playing field. We are not dealing on a level playing field in this country. Not the black, not the brown, uh, not uh, anybody except uh, those that think they own things. Yes, ma'am, Dr. Bryant. This is what <laughs> <laughs> you got to jump in. Right, that's what <laughs> you got the plug and he done finished. So now, you know, each time you have the question, you stop, let you know, all, just what y'all want to say. <laughs> I just want to piggyback and say kudos to you for what you just said in terms of perceived power, right? Uh, I don't use the word minority. I cut that out of my vocabulary years ago. We are not minorities. We are not minor in anything. We're not minor, particularly when we pull together in numbers. We're not minor in intelligence. We're not minor in capabilities. We're only minor in terms of our perceived power. And so that's important. We have power. We underutilize that. So um, I just, when you said that, it just struck a chord with me because it slipped. Like right on with that. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments, thoughts, questions to the panelists? Because that's what we do. We, again, we give them the opportunity to speak, and then if you have any thoughts, any commentary, any questions, we, we go with it like that. So, well, I haven't many. I, I thought you said we were going to have a chance to speak. You know, I wrote this thing that I thought I was going to do in front of a thousand people in front of, you know, my wife asked me to write the next question. <laughs> 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 you, you can keep using all that in your response. Now I gave some the stuff to you, so you have your response. I said, so it's not like a surprise. So this one is one of the responses. What are the hopes of African Americans? And then stop you, Mr. Hall. What are the hopes of African Americans? Well, all we can hope for is to, to, to level the playing field. We have. We have power, we just don't use it because we've been institutionalized and brainwashed for so long to make us think that we're not powerful, to make us hate each other. We're the only race on this planet at war with each other. Name another race at war with each other. Name none, we are the black man. We're the only race on this entire planet at war, you know why? They made us that way. They have institutionalized us. They, it took a long time for them to do this. A long time. It took the last 400 years, but they only started, they used to have us as slaves, so they weren't worried about it. But when they gave us our freedom, they had to figure out another way. 
They created the courts. You know, they created things that keep us in control. And this is what we have to fight right now today. We have to fight that. And until we are able to do that, uh, we, we, you know, this room is is the starting point. But we have to not just talk. We have to have action. If, if there's no action, I mean, how can we proceed? How can we get anything done if there is no action? We can't just come here and talk about it. We got to make it happen. That, and you know, I, I'm I'm in the business now where. Um, I started a newspaper. You know, I tell y'all I do everything. I got three digital newspapers. My, my, uh, sis, my, my, my number one just came in the door, the doctor, Dr. Robert Bryan. Um, uh, but, uh, and a friend of mine told me we were going to start it together. Three months later, we ain't started nothing. So I just got to take it to the point where I don't wait on nobody to do anything. We need to start what we're trying to do. But we have to keep working on it. We can't just talk about it. And then we meet three months later again and talk about it. And then three months again and talk about it. No, it needs to be some action. We need to be, I'm surprised that, you know, I, I, and I don't know what your connections is in the community, but uh, how many uh, other people are Hispanic in here? Well, not Hispanic, but I'm, I'm part of the Caribbean. Oh, okay. So, and, and we need more yeah. of all of us in here because it's going to take all of us. Yeah. And until we get all of us in this room and then we get to where we have to move into a bigger room, you know, that's what we're, we're next, year three, we need to be in a bigger room. It needs to be broadcast. We need to make sure everybody is here because this is how we change things. You can't change things by just uh, 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 talking about it and leaving. You got to change things by making people bend to your will. Talk too much in here, but burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the hopes of Hispanic Americans? What are the hopes of Hispanic Americans? Yeah, I would say, you know, the history being similar but somewhat different with immigration, with most of the immigration laws and barriers that are in place. I mean, you know, people talk a lot about we need immigration reform, we are gonna do this, a lot of promises, but it's like, okay. DACA right now is at risk, you know, for dreamers. And so people have these false hopes and false promises and then no action behind it when it comes time to taking the steps that are needed to create change and for people to be safe here in the country, right? Nothing, silence, crickets. So that's really frustrating. And you know, it's the culture that is ingrained in this country is like, Black and brown people are here to help. We're the help, right? Mm -hmm. We're just here to clean, to cook. We built the country, right? But modern slavery, yeah. uh, low pay, no benefits, always struggling. Our neighborhoods are not taken care of. We often live in the same neighborhoods. Not always, but a lot of times. We're neighbors. What's that? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's I'm first generation American, right? And so I didn't come in with a lot of that generational wealth and things. We don't have that to build similar experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're over here trying to build something from scratch because it's taken away from you yeah. or you're treated like you're less than, paid less than, you know, you speak two languages, but you're going to make half of what one person is that doesn't look like you, but you know, they're going to make more than you, even though you do two people's job. Just one example. Very frustrating. So, you know, we feel stuck sometimes. And so I'm at the point where it's like, well, you got to build something then for us. And that's where Miss It comes in because it's like there was literally no nonprofit organization in the Southeast that's not in Atlanta <laughs> that's helping this coastal area for immigrants. And all the funding is from Atlanta. All the events that we would go to for advocacy, Atlanta, we'd have to drive four hours. When are they coming here? We got immigrants here too, you know, all kinds of immigrants. And so not just 
students that are here, you know, international students in Savannah that study. That's what people think about when they hear immigrants in Savannah, they think about like SCAD and the international population. Yes, those are immigrants too, but what about the coastal folks who live here like Daniela and grew up in Brunswick? Mm -hmm. You know, what about the, the trailas or the parks that are right there on 80 that I drive through every day, you know, where there's a lot of Spanish speaking black and brown people who live there who need help and are a lot are undocumented, not all, but a lot are undocumented and need help too. So we're at the point and the hope is to create something because nobody else is gonna create it. So you gotta just, I'm like, okay, now Daniela needs to get paid. So we got a 501c3, we're getting lots of funding. We're making stuff happen, you know, but you gotta build it because it's not even burned down. It's like not even built for our population no. in the Southeast, really. I mean, people are like, there's hardly any. I'm like, not really. You just need to know where to look, you know? Um, and we're powerful. We're powerful. So that unity, organizing, that's what I hope for the future. And what was shared about Mesa, they were on our show, Run Tell That, two weeks ago. And that's what came up in the via our black media. And so we had them on and folks then. And Danielle, I was like, they were happy to be on the pro program that again, they think it's just for the African Americans, but then we look out for the community. Mm -hmm. And so this segue to, oh, excuse me, anyone has any thoughts, comments about what they have shared? I just wanted to piggyback on okay. what you said. Right. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, she, how she, she was saying about the roles that they give us mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. servitude, you know, and black people got happy when all the Spanish people came over mm -hmm. because they were the new slaves. <laughs> they can't get yes. that. You know, they were the new slaves. You know, black people got That's happy. True. And, and, and you know, every time you look, you, you, we're, we're saying, oh, they give that to the Spanish people now. Yeah, nobody wants you to know, do that job. Right, and, and, and so today. we thought that we were up yeah. in that. You know, so we moved up. But they showed us real quick that they put us back down under, you know. And you know we're all guilty of of, of a certain thing. The the the, the, the African American people or community for for thinking that, mm -hmm. and the Hispanic community for not understanding also that there's help if we all get along. Mm -hmm what the you know Spanish the Hispanic community hasn't done is rally to our aid. We are always rallying to everybody's aid. Look at y'all Facebook pages when something happened somewhere across the room. Y'all all now y'all uh 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 what's the fight over there? Ukraine. Um, Ukraine. Ukrainians now. Yeah. You got save Korea, Ukraine. Save yourself. You ain't even the work stops in your own backyard. I wouldn't give a Burn what happens in Ukraine? Ukraine. There's too much happening in Port Whitworth for me to work. <laughs> you know, too much happening in Savannah and Chatham County and the state of Georgia for me to worry about. I don't care what happened in the Ukraine. That's their wall. Until they come over here messing with me, I don't care. That's their wall. We have to elect people to, to handle that. But anyway, um, uh, it's about unity, uh, and we have to understand our place in it. Y'all are in a great position to change the world. But you got to start at home. Change Savannah. Change the state of Georgia. Then you can change the nation. But they're scared of us uniting. They're really scared of us uniting. Listen, Stacey Abrams and all of them right now today should be out talking to all of y'all. But you know what they do? They come here and they talk to the same people every time. Jamal and Maxine. You know, <laughs> 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 they come here and they talk to the same people every time what, instead what, of talking what, to people. What, 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 he yeah, from here. So people, his side? family are helping him a he little bit. He comes to the neighborhood a little bit, but he's not he doing everything that he needs to do. <laughs> I voted for both of them yesterday. You know, for Stacey and I voted early. I, I, I vote the first day every time. But what I'm saying is, it's unity. They're scared of us uniting. They're scared yeah, of us fear. being. Yeah, this is yeah. this is really powerful. Let us get bigger. Mm -hmm. huh. Year three, and we do it the right way, and get everybody in. Y'all and Jamala, 
do some work. We'll be all right. Is that what I'm doing right now? <laughs> 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 so, so I remember, uh, like maybe a few weeks ago, I seen Dr. Brain. I was talking, and I was like, "They thought she worked at the I was like, "We need to." They recently had like the Lat Latinx, like the um, mm -hmm. the event. So I'm like, you know what? Let me where do I come from? I come from a little small little place. I'm gullible, the crazy. You know what I'm saying? We need an uh, actual like uh, event. There's something similar to that where we we teaching people like, oh, this is how we speak gullible. This we this is how we cook gumbo. This is how we do. This is how they grew rice back in the days. Like my granddad, my granddad grew rice in the plantation. The water just high up. They have been done that, done that, growing the rice, you know what I'm saying? Drain the field. We gotta teach people these things so they know because me being from where I'm from, I know where I come from historically, you know what I'm saying, as far as like my family. But a lot of, I see a lot of people when I go traveling across America, they don't know anything other than, oh, this is my grandma, this is my granddaddy. Uh, they, I think they come from Georgia, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know they come from Georgia. 75% of African Americans in America is gullible, uh, gullible has heritage, but they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Versus somebody from Savannah, which I moved to Savannah when I was seven years old from Mexico. But we know for the most part. And then it's still kind of like dissipating because a while back in, in June, the first time I met you, I, we was here. We was at the, uh, the Juneteenth thing. That's my actual, actual family that's a child. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, my grandma called me, she's like, oh, let's get up, get up, go. <laughs> like, you know, get, get, what, you, what you doing? Get up, boy. <laughs> your, your, people, your people up there in Savannah, you need to go with me, go help, help Marjorie out. Because Marjorie's a little old, the old lady can't, she can't really see like this. Get up, boy, go help the people. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, you, I'm, I'm like, he's an African spirit. My mother, like, might have been less than a week later, we had like a, the, sh the other shot, the shot, other shot came and he came to my high school. Cause you know I got kicked out of the hot surrender. It was like, oh, you gotta go to the next other country. You ain't going to be back no. So I was, he was there again, the African spirit. And they, I remember you asked, you said something about where did we go during uh during slavery? Where, where we went first? He's like, Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine. He's right there. See that Saint Augustine? I got him. Showing <laughs> off. Yeah. You know what I'm tired of? Huh? You were talking about I time. saw him on time, y'all. I was just sitting on the bench. That looks like real familiar. That was Dr. Marshall. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got it. You got it. And another thing about it, because I grew up on the side of And so, like, come, like, it's different. We have to really start working. We have to really start going back up in the community. Because we're going through a thing now. Right, they're taking the land. Yeah, they're starting to take they're the land. They're taking the land. Like, yeah. Hall Hemick is not even the same. That's what they did. Oh, that's what they did. 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 Because it's one thing to not know, and it's one thing to see, and then it's blues mm -hmm. So when you actually talk about working in the community, like it's, you have to have a real dedication to it. Because older people are dying off, and some of the secrets they take with you, you know, they try to instill it in you when you're young, but if you're not like susceptible to trying to learn about it, when they go, I mean, even if they're here and you lose the land, you still lost the heritage, and you don't even realize it. Right. It's like somebody being dead, but you can still see them walk free and back and forth. Great. And like, I got one more thing to say for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to talk to you. Older people, when I was growing up, they always said, because I was one of those kids, I always wanted to know what the world was, what was before me. They always said, like, you know, when you went to school, we wasn't able to speak color, like, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't able to speak our language. This is an actual language. Like, when I go to Jamaica, they speak Patois. When I go to Haiti, they speak Creole, right? It's a, it's a language that we took English words and mixed what we understood English and mixed it with African words like buckler, that's the slave, the slave woman, gumbo, that's okra, you know what I'm saying? And different things like that. So we got to be able to speak our language like our language is supposed to be spoken for us to be able to carry on that, that spoken tradition, you know? Because when I went to school, they was like, we don't even know what this kid is saying. Mm. <laughs> Literally, I had to take the ESL, you know? 
Yeah, they conditioned us for so long right. to like, not to teach our children that. Right. You must you yeah. 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 yeah, we think there's something wrong with them to speak like that. The bonics, they said that was bad. Right. You know, so we have to be able to to um, uh, uh, catalog the information that Dr. Barnes and Dr. Torre is giving us. We got some great uh, uh, history uh, uh, historians here in the city, mm -hmm. and we have to be able to catalog this information so it can be passed down. They always pass the history down. We, and the younger people, you all, I didn't have to fault you all, y'all don't want to pay attention because y'all got these phones in your hand all day long. Y'all don't even know y'all got two hands. I'm serious, y'all don't. I, I, got, I, got, I got mentees that I, that I got 10 of them, and they do this here all day long with the phone. And so when they come to me to work, they working with one hand. They don't know they got that hand works. So, you know, it's a it's a disconnect. And so we have to find a way to connect you all back in so that you all can carry this history going down. Uh, go ahead, Jamal. I know you're looking at me saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know me. In terms of, yeah, my little mind, like, I always have a vision about stuff. And it always go right. It goes astray. Yeah, so, okay. Wow. I'm going to say this right here. When you talk about African American studies or African studies or black studies, people don't realize that this start, this academic area right here gave rise to other programs. It gave rise to Latino or Hispanic studies program, women's study program, it gave rise to Asian study program, Native American study program, it gave rise to LGBTQ. All this came out of African studies. And so what y'all are looking at right now, this is why we have created these programs, these panels, that that's what we want to occur. We want not people to understand. And just like I said to Julian last year, we were in uh, a, a much bigger venue, because we had some performances, and people saw that. And so this time, we're like, okay, we want to have some people talking about this right here. And so now, we're going to throw out to y'all, what are the common interests and common goals that you all see from a Hispanic American perspective that we have? What are some of the common goals and interests that you see that we have? from a Hispanic American perspective. Do we want to come to the African American perspective? Yeah, I, I mean, power, right? People power. We have <clears> it, <throat> but it's like, how do we shift that and to make policy changes and make it so the system isn't as terrible as they have created it to be for us? It was created this way, but what can we bring down? What can we do together? You know, because it's like when black folks could vote, then we could vote too. Like, you're, you're right. When we all work together, we all have more rights. And so a lot of the similarities, so I mean, so much growing up, you know, music, culture, dancing, that's what most people think of, food, you know, when we think about our food. Um, Dominican food, very much African-based, you know, sancocho, um, a lot of the words, too, and a lot of the healing and the natural practices and the spiritual practices that have been whitewashed, you know, but it's African in root. Especially the music. Especially the music. Them them both, like them both, Dominican music, that's that same <laughs> beat, you know? And especially if you- I have that. <laughs> I love your commentary. <laughs> you need your own show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's like, why did you say that, Joe? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no ideas, please. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, the music, you know, the Caribbean and like African and Jamaican beats, all of that. There's a line, there's a thread through all of it. And guess what? It's Africa. Surprise. When I did my like DNA test and I showed it on Facebook to my family and texted everybody, my one aunt goes, well, you're not Dominican at all. I'm like, what do you think we are? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there's so much instilled racism and colorism and, you know, murder. Genocide. That's right. Genocide. Absolutely. In the Dominican Republic. That is just like, you know, I'm not black, I'm Dominican. Well, what? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so that's a lot. But you have your hand raised? Yeah. Julius has his chance. Then, then, okay, we can. I didn't understand the question. Right. 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 We'll wait until Julius. Until we both have a chance. Right. That's what we're going to see. Now, people are thinking, like, okay, he does this on the shows. He does this now at Georgia Southern. Now, I ain't going to say he's doing the classroom, too. He always trying to control what we do. So, Julie Saul. 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 Jul
common interests or goals that you see that we have as an African African American? Well, everything else is mine. The, 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 the common goal that we should all be looking at right now is one thing, power. Power. If you don't have it, what can you do? You don't have, your interests are nothing without power. So take this for instance. 10 years ago, we outnumbered the uh, Hispanic community by millions of votes, um, by millions in population. 10 years ago, we outnumbered them. Now, they outnumber us 10 years later by millions in the population. Millions, they outnumber us. We're at 13% of the population, they say 13.8, and the Hispanic community is at 18% of the American population. Wow, it went from 8% to 18%. But one thing that they don't have, who do you, do you see any Hispanics on the national stage with power. No. I mean, you got one or two. But <clears throat> you don't see it as like you see in the African American community. We're everywhere. But we have to be able to unify and you, 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 um, come together and um, unite all of us together mm -hmm. in order to change things. Power. They, got, they, they outnumber us by millions of people, but there's no advocacy. See, we have to be able to help them. They have to understand, okay, they're there. Let us get on their coattails and get there so that we can also, now, you know, it's going to be some people saying, oh, man, you bring them on, they're going to they outnumber us, and then they'll be in all these positions. That's what people are going to think now. But we, we have to be able to, 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 to uh, come together and um, harness that power that we have. We, we, we have to be able to use it to change things. If we don't, then um, we're, we're gonna be in that sunken pit, pit for, for a while because the African-American community is certainly in a sunken pit without a doubt, and we have to rise up out of it. We might, it might look like we're making a lot of uh, uh, moves and we're making a lot of, of uh, 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 achievements, uh, an accomplishment, um, but that is just on the surface because we still can't get what we want. So it's power. That's the one thing that we should all have in common. I, <laughs> I was going to say, um, along with having power, I think what the problem is that we have within our within our own community is the fact that we don't. We don't know or understand who we are as a people. How are we gonna have power when we don't even understand or like to claim who we are? Like speaking for the African American community, because I come from a generation of people who don't, who do, who do not accept their Africanity. They do not accept, they don't even know their own history. I, I can't even find out my own history. So, you know, with me having people like that in my life, just imagine how many more young African-American people are going through something like this. So with having, because if you have power without having knowledge of self, that's, that's chaos. That's chaos. So we need to have an understanding of who we are. And when we have an understanding of who we are, then that's when we can unify. And then that's when we can also unify with other people. Because everybody else, they have their culture. I'm not saying the African American, we do have our own culture, but we don't understand the history of our culture where these beats come from, where the gold comes from, you know? So, yeah. That's awesome because y'all are the future. I mean, we go, we, we downstream. Y'all are the future. Uh, and this, let y'all know, this is our school board representative. And this is a school board representative who looks out for the people and look out for the children, look out for everyone. So this is one of our real sheroes here in Savannah, Chatham County. I'm just sitting here thinking about power. Could somebody talk about HBCUs? Because that's where the power was and it's not as powerful as it used to be. I learned more about myself when I attended FAMU. Mm -hmm. That's when I learned black history. Mm -hmm. What Deion Sanders, for example, is doing is powerful. Mm -hmm. So y'all want to just kind of touch on, the, and I appreciate Georgia Southern Doing what they're doing with the Gullah Geechee. Mm -hmm. What's going on at Savannah State? Mm -hmm. 
Why don't we have a new sex room? That's <laughs> my real question. Well, you know, Brother Sutton, I live in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Brian, go on. <laughs> Two things. One, in all honesty, this is on air. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in all honesty, Savannah State <laughs> should have a government teacher center. So, right? Yeah. Okay. But since there was a void, then we stepped up and filled the void. Now, I want to go back. I'm so glad that you're here and, what you, and, and, and represent education. If our accurate, accurate history were told from pre-K on, mm -hmm. it would do two things. It would change the way our young people view themselves. Mm -hmm. We would know we come from greatness. Mm -hmm. We would know that we are inventors. We would know we were brought here for our skills. Mm -hmm. What we know, what we can do. We were not just brought here because we're, we're strong in body. Right? So there was a benefit to having Africans here beyond agriculture, mm -hmm. right? And not only would we know that, but our white little boys and girls would learn to appreciate and value what black people bring to the country, to the world. That makes them uncomfortable due to the policy I understand. and the basic concept. Yeah. They're going to feel uncomfortable. Though. I understand, but that's what's needed. If I'm just being facetious. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you are. I'm and what I say to them that. is, and, and, and the people who say that don't want mm -hmm. unity. The people who say that don't want us to be unified mm -hmm. in power. Yes. The people who say that are the oppressors. to understand the importance 
of accurate information from the very beginning, from the cradle. If we want to stop the school to prison pocket pipeline, we got to start it in, in preschool with accurate black history. But the problem is we don't control the curriculum. The state mandates the curriculum and the legislators mandates curriculum. It was Buddy Carter's device concept policy that came from Buddy Carter. So we're mandated from the state. So that's why it's so important for you all to vote yeah. mm -hmm. and to put the right people in those yes. positions so that we can, our children can be taught, you know, the curriculum that we need in our schools. Okay, we're not going to be here all night. Uh, <laughs> last year. I mean, last month, um, Dr. Tanya Howard Hall, I have mad respect and love for her. You just went and stole the last question that we're going to put out there, essentially. <laughs> what it comes down to, when do we start to work? And what can be done concretely in starting to work? Julius Hall. We start now. It, it, it has already started. If we can get a commitment from everybody in this room, because, see, people aren't going to follow one person. But, you know, they, a lot of people follow me. But they can't hear you in the back. <laughs> people are not going to follow one person. <laughs> But they'll follow a bunch of us. If they see a bunch of us doing something, they don't want to be a part of it. So what we have to do is be committed to change. Because if you're not committed to change, then you, you know, like my wife always tells people, if you don't vote, you don't count. If you're not committed to change, you can't complain. You can't complain about anything if you're not committed to putting the work in. They have conditioned us to not care. We don't care. And now they've got these young people thinking that it don't matter. Mm -hmm. Everything matters. This is what we're going to, what are you going to do with your kids 20 years from now? Tell them the same story, we have these same conversations. Yeah. No, we need to start the work. It starts right now. And this organization, whatever we're forming here, it needs to be formed. Something needs to be formed so we can get this together. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you have a, a Hispanic Chamber of Commerce with a bunch of people, but my, one of my problems in the whole thing is, you know, there is no advocacy in the Hispanic community to tell these people that the, the Hispanic leaders, no, y'all are wrong. You got more Hispanic leaders that are Republicans fighting against mm -hmm. everything yeah. that y'all mm -hmm. want and yeah. need than anything in this world. Yeah. I wonder if the whole state of Florida, every Hispanic town, you have things that they are Republicans. What is wrong with these people? Um, these are yeah. the people, just like these dumb Cuban. Trump people who keep yeah. voting the for Trump, Trump the who Trump. know that Trump yeah. don't love them and don't care about I them, know. and they still vote for them. Still vote for it them. is pathetic. What we have to do is understand our power. That's what this whole thing is. Our, it's about power, and we got it. We just got to be able to understand and recognize it and yeah. make it work. We can. Yeah. All right. And what can be done? What, what can be what done? So you're right. There's started. not a lot of advocacy, and I respectfully disagree because now we have the SA Micro Equity Southeast, mm -hmm. which came from the need, right? It came from like, who else is going to do it? There's nobody. We can't wait on the Atlanta folks to help people here on the coast or to help people in Florida or South Carolina. Like, we need to do our own thing. You know, mm -hmm. and advocate and meet with politicians and talk about policy change and all that stuff. And so, with yeah, us together, that's right. Yeah, together, right? Because, like you said, we need each other. Mm -hmm. We can't be it's us versus them. We got to organize. We need each other. We need each other. Right. And the work is heavy, so rest up. Lord, I'll be calling you soon to put the show on our black meeting. Please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Yeah, rest up. You know, I have to say that as a mental health I got person. <laughs> Lord, yeah. I said as a mental health person, I say rest up. And some of that stuff that is learned and the shame and the minimizing we talked about this is trauma related. It's a survival technique, right, Dr. Brian? We talked about that. Oh yeah, I know. It's trauma. It's carried down. It's biological, it's chemical, it's in our brains, it's in our bodies, and we need to really re honor our bodies, honor ourselves, and love each other. Love, we gotta love, because there's so much hate that's been taught to us. So we gotta, you know, lift each other up. If you have an opportunity, bring someone else in the room. Carry someone else up. 
you know? Mention people's names. Organize, organize, organize. I shared something this I'm sitting here thinking. It's just a shame that we don't understand government each year. Mm -hmm. We get teased. That was something bad yeah. to associate yourself with. I didn't even realize that I was speaking each year. Until I went to damn you and my roommate, I said, she said something. I said, Jess Webster. She said, Jess Webster. I said, Jess Webster. You know, my grandmother raised me. And then churn. You know, I didn't know that was Ichi. I didn't even know. And it's bad that we don't even know that. We're speaking. And, you know, that, that don't talk, don't, you know, speak the king's English. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. But you should take Dr. Teray's class in Gullah Ichi language and culture. Mm -hmm. I sure do take it. <laughs> So I um kinda wanted to go back on what you two said. So my thing is how do we reach like the legislators and then the the, the people when we're putting political power in like these entertainers and these rappers and like there are less people less black people specifically that are going to college so how do we reach that in between because I mean like you count for like a very small percentage you want me to answer it <laughs> okay you, you 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 give power to people who you want to give power to Jay-Z <laughs> shouldn't have no power you should have the power Jay-Z doesn't have more power than us. We just give him that power. You know, I've never owned a pair of, Mike, uh, of Jordans in my life. Don't want to own a pair. I won't give Michael Jordan no power over me to want to stand in the line and get his shoes. You know, we give people that power. And what we have to do is reclaim it because we still have it. So we have to reclaim it. Michael you Jordan. all go into the polls every day. That's what needs to happen, voting. Like she said, voting, you must vote. And not only that, take your friend, take five of them. My wife, every 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 election, she go pick up five, six people that she know ain't going to vote, she gonna make them vote. Take them to vote. You got power. That's how you reclaim it. You ain't gonna have to read out the names on the ballot and tell them about the people because you know they ain't gonna do it. That's the other thing to go along with that. But he had his hand up. He kind of had a I was gonna say something similar to what she said. I'm gonna say, because I got a group of friends, and I was there's like, I don't know, I don't really vote. I done voted. A lot of young people want to vote, they don't know who to vote for. Right. So yeah. you gotta you gotta take you gotta take your time to actually like inform them of <laughs> oh we got Raphael Warnock, Raphael Warnock from what Kate Holmes right there by Bridge Home. I done met Raphael Warnock, I done met Van and Oxen from Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I done met <laughs> I done met the mayor of Statesboro. I know these people, you know what I'm saying? Because 'Cause I'm from them, but they gotta know the candidates. If they don't know the candidates, like, well, what's the what's the point of the voting? I I voice them better. Because they don't even know who the person they voting for. Right. What they what they stand for, you know what I'm saying? All right, we just gotta help y'all. Okay, well, I was just going to say, 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 I but where, like, he always teaches us that media is right now running the black mind, right? Yeah, right. So, when well, you got little kids out here, like, paying attention to what Kanye out here saying and stuff like that, like, or, this is simple, like, what he was just saying, myth of miseducation, my grandmother, she's sitting there talking about, I'm not hoping that they did it just because of that YouTube commercial. It's like as simple as that, something could play your mind that quick, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, the miseducation is really big, and I think that a lot, like you say, Pouring into ourselves and knowing that we have the power is a key, but like when people, like I'm here, but they're not here, so like I know this, you know? How do, like, it's not as simple as people seeing me and knowing that they can do it too. It's not as simple as that. So, how do you get people out there to know that they can do it too? Like, of course, the candidate has to come and talk 
to the people. A uh, prime example, you say you met Van Johnson and I was pitying him. Um, I helped Van Johnson get in office. Mm -hmm. He don't want to give me the credit for it, but I am responsible for Van Johnson as much as I am responsible for Jamon Torre. But Kenya, Julius Stahl, and Van Johnson. I will tell that all the jokes where my wife grew up at, in Woodsville, mm -hmm. in, in the west side of Savannah. It was a bunch of kids out there in West Savannah and on um, um, Woodsville and in West Savannah that was talking that they blamed voting for the mayor. I was on the mayor's campaign at that time. It, he was having problems out there. You know what I did? I, took, I, I had him go out and talk to those guys. And he changed their mind. Because people want to meet you. They, they say, I have seen you on TV. Yeah. See how uh, your grandma got convinced that? Mm -hmm. Take uh, Keisha Gibson Carter right here in this city. Mm -hmm. Keisha Gibson Carter is for the people. Nothing she does is about selfish, selfishness, about herself. None of it. It's about advocating for the people. But if you look at the news, you would think she's the worst politician in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. But you don't know her. But once you meet her, which I think y'all have, yeah. you understand her advocacy. You understand her passion and her how what she's determined to do and what changes she want to make. It makes a difference when people meet you. And you all really answered your own question, and that's use, using your voice on social media to educate. People just grow up. I'm not just saying. Yeah, people just grow up. Our hands. But you're not telling them how to make them go by. I like and use it for that. Yes. It just takes. It takes effort. It, she said it takes work. No, not that. No, what? Well, I'm just saying. It's not that. Okay. We're going to finish show for you all. It's not easy. We can do that. Oh, yeah. I don't like that. Well, I know going to share something now to, to, to share with you all that what Dr. Bryan is saying is actual. You might not think, and I'm going to bring up something, this is personal. Uh, for one of the campaigns, I did a video for a particular candidate. That person won that seat. The other candidate was mad that I did the video for that person. And some other people came and said, they said, Jamal, you know what? They said, you influence some people to vote. Now, it wasn't everybody, but it was enough to get that person over the hump, and that candidate was bad. So even sometimes, you might think, and this sometimes is people we don't know. People see you walking down the street. Or see, I, when I go to Walmart, I have people talking to me that I never, ever, never met them, but they saw the stuff on social media. And so that influenced And I'm saying that is something that, that, that is the power. And that's why I keep saying, you know, that understand you got the power. Only you got to do just act on it. Other people ain't acting on it. We let them get the ones right there. But as long as we act, we can make the change. And so we're going to wind this up. But something I need to share with I did not bring it up. One thing that happened for particular African, Latino, or Hispanic, they are often told to identify not with race or ethnicity, but to race, to identify with nationality. Mm -hmm. That's why she so said be talking, Dominican, yeah. That's why be Bolivian, yeah. Ecuadorian. So even when people talk about Hispanics outnumber us, I'm not saying even it's in that, race. you have bought and you have bought into the narrative of the oppressor. Right. They have you going to say Hispanic. But so within that are African, Hispanic, and African Latinos. So when you see those numbers right there, and I'm always looking at people like, no, if you say you got the understanding, you will not say that because it's not a race, it's cultural. And so, but now you begin to understand that how some of them are attacked. And I shared some folks about um, they were Bolivian. I said, you Afro Bolivian. The person denied it, but went back to talk to their grandma. My grandma said, yeah, yeah, we, we, are, we are black. And the person that I shared with the fact that I had always thought we were just Bolivian. And they were like saying, now. Nah, but that's a part of that miseducation that keeps us divided. Exactly. And so that's why this is important. And now, this is a housekeeping matter, because we're going to be closing up. Those who did not uh, sign in, please sign in, and those who uh, get the evaluation also, because this is what we want to do. And now, I'll share this with you. When Dr. Bryan's like, what program are we going to do? Um, October, I'm like, Afro-American um, Unity and Hispanic uh, uh, Unity. Because Julie's what we did, we showed the cultural part last year, but we want to have some real dialogue this year right here because there was someone
from the Hispanic Chamber. And now I want to give you background. There are some Afro-Latinos down in what we know as um, uh, Liberty County. They want to join the Black Chamber, but was told, because they're Latinos, they were told that you got to make a decision. You got to either join the, Latin, the Hispanic Chamber or the Black Chamber. That's your choice. And that, and if you decide to join the black chamber, you cannot be a member of the Hispanic chamber. So that's what I want. So Dr. Brian, that's, that's what, So when I'm doing a program and other stuff like that, oh, this is nothing for my man. Yeah. That's why I want us not finally not have real conversations with people that I know want to work together. That's why when you like, hey, Mesa wanted to be, we, we hooking up with Mesa. That's why Mesa been down with me on Instagram <laughs> for a while. I was like, we're going to have the people because yeah. now that way. So that's what I'm saying. They got a battle also. It's African Latinos with some other people who are going to say, oh, no, no, Dr. Bryant, no, uh-uh, you are Panamanian. Mm -hmm. You're Costa Rican. You know, if you want to go with the black folks, then you go over it. You can't be a part of it. You can't be both. That is 2022, 2023, 2020, 2024, if we don't make a change. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. This is about now. We, we, not, we are able to make the bridge right now. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. More than what some people even realize. Now, people looking at this right here, they're not understanding. Oh, we're about to make this change. Well, we're meeting again. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's and what let, we need and to let me tell you what happened. Yeah. One person said that last year at the program. I said, yeah, okay, we can do that. Yeah. I sent emails out. They ain't respond back to me. And I was laughing. <laughs> so, the other party has to go, where's the I said, oh, they ain't respond. Yeah. They ain't respond back. And that's why that said the same. And we had to feel, and then some other people. Dr. Bryant, you asked about Savannah State. I intentionally contacted folks at Savannah State. I intentionally. Just like that. Yeah, Even this is right here. So I'm not saying how to That's why. It's going to be the Georgia Southern Quick that's going to make it happen. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, I'm just saying that was yeah. all good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I'm going to make it happen. Right. Like it. And, so, and that Judas will not have you do a show. That's what he want to do. And he always yeah, right. people to do shows. And I don't like that. I don't get no credit for it. I think some like, young women, uh, 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 <laughs> Lead us on what we're doing right now. She makes it happen. And we appreciate her greatly for that. So we'll let you close us out, Dr. Bryant. First of all, I just want to say again, thank you to everyone. Uh, Dr. Jure says, I make it happen. But um, I was very intentional and deliberate about identifying someone who could forward move the Gullah Geechee Center and Africana Studies with me, right? So that this being here is not by accident. Mm -hmm. It was a deliberate um, choice for me and for him to make the choice to leave where he was and to come and be uh, my 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 right hand person. So I was gonna say point every time, but I'm gonna come with the other. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but again, thank you, thank you very much. Please complete your evaluations. Give us your feedback. That is how we get better, by listening to you. Um, thank you, and you'll be, um, next month is about voting on what day? It's uh, November 3rd, it's gonna be Zoom. It's gonna be Zoom. Now, I'll share something with y'all about this. I sent our contact, and what is so crazy, the males have responded more than the females who I asked to be on the Zoom. Mm. So I got about seven men that saw me knocking them out. And one, Sabrina Newby, um, I asked others, nobody else respond. But again, we got folks, and one of them, he had been on our, Davis Green was like, I want to be on the panel again. Vice President of SGA, so he's excited, so he wants to be on, but we have some other folks. And now again, about voting, that's why we said that's the power. You know, people that that's our voice. And then on December the 2nd, Quorum Quorum we will be, uh, in this building, but in a different room for that. So uh, come back and be a part of more conversations. We have uh, Crack Tea in November. November 11th. Oh, and that's going to be on um, military, military presence. Uh, military.